In this tutorial, we will go into deeper, more advanced use cases using bear scripting. We will go into things like what's the difference between echo and cat. We will use the set parameter to replace values and parameters within a file. We will write into files, we will manipulate those files. We will also look into the pipe operator, how we can combine multiple commands in the same line. We will also use commands like grep and awk in order to manipulate and search within those files. We will also learn how to search directories and how to search for specific files in specific directories matching a certain pattern. We will also see how we can return those files back and return certain lines back. We will then see how we can combine those return statements with the next command. And we will also look into regular expressions. We will see, for example, how we can determine if an email is valid or not using bash. So we will go deeper into all those advanced commands that most projects actually require you to know. This will also tremendously be useful for interview questions, fixing pipelines, creating automation scripts, and basically in every IT project you would come across needing those commands. So let's get into it. First of all, I'm using Windows here, so I'm gonna be using Git Bash. If you're using Linux or Kali or macOS, you should be fine with just using your own terminal. But if you're on Windows, I will recommend using Git Bash. So let us first delete this here and start with a simple command. First of all, I just wanna output some text. So in order to do that, we can use echo. So let us echo, for example, param or something like that. So we will be able to see param. So let's say we want to write this into a file. If we want to write param into a file, we will just use the greater operator and create a file. So for example, file.txt. And if we use ls, we will be able to see that file. So now, how can we output the content of that file? Of course, we can open our editor, but we can also use cat in order to print out the stream. So let's use cat file txt and we will see param. If we go back to our Visual Studio Code Explorer, we will have this file here. So let's say we want to append something to this file. If we use echo param2, for example, into file.txt, it will actually just overwrite our file. If you again use cat, we will see that it is overwritten, it is not added. So in order to add or append new lines, what we can do is use echo, uh, for example, param2, and we use the greater symbol two times to the same file, which is now going to append it. So let us again use cat, and as you can see, we now have both values. So let us try something more complicated now. So let's say we want to replace the value. Let us first create the key value pair. So let us return to this command and say that parameter three is equal to three, for example. Quotation marks. And if you again use cat, we will have that parameter three. And let's say we want to replace the value of it. So we want parameter three to be equal to four, for example. For that, we can use the set command. Here is a quick overview of what the set stream editor does. And you can find basically everything in this documentation here. But it is quite complicated and there are so many things how you can manipulate strings. We will not go into all of them. But we will explain um, some basic use cases of set. So um, set is used for manipulating our strings. So let us set up our set command. So first of all, we will need to type in set. Now we want to make it case insensitive, which we will do with the parameter i. Now we need to specify this in exclamation marks and we need to specify our file, which is file.txt. Now we will specify what we will actually do in there. So first of all, we need our replacement command, which is s, and you can find all of this in the documentation. Now we need to define what we are going to replace. And we're going to replace param3 equals now dot star. So this means that we are going to replace everything that comes after the equal sign. Now we need again to use our divider, which is um, the divider sign. And please note that if you have the same sign somewhere in the command, then you would need to use another uh, sign. So you could use, for example, a question mark and replace this with a question mark. 
So let us go back here and we will specify a new value, which will be param3 equals to 4, for example. We will close our division sign, close our exclamation mark and mark the file. So what we can do now is cat file.txt and we see that our param3 is equal to 4. If we go into Visual Studio Code, we can see that it is equal to 4. We can now also use the pipe operator, which is used to combine multiple commands. So let us go back to this command and use our file, uh, use our pipe operator and attach the cat command, cat file.txt. And now we will also display the results in one command. So we didn't need to run cat exclusively. So far we have used cat and echo. So what is actually the difference between those two? Cat concatenates files and prints out the standard output. So it means everything within that file will be concatenated and printed out. Whilst echo will take a parameter and print out one line of text. But we can also use the echo command to display the contents of file.txt. We can actually make the shell read the file, which we will do in the following way. We will use quotation marks and we will use a parameter. So this is how you mark a parameter. And we will use the shell to read the output of txt. And we will close the quotation mark. And we will get the same result back. But mostly you would use cat to display uh, the contents of a file and echo to give parameters and to write into files and to display lines. Now it would also be interesting to search for a certain line. So for that we can use grab. So if we use grab, as param3 equals and we specify the file where we are searching as file.txt you will see that it returns the exact line that we were searching for and you can use this for example to search in directories or add some other parameters for example if you're searching in a directory you should use minus r to search recursively but there is only one file in this directory and um, so if you have multiple folders within a directory that have multiple files, you would use the recursive sign. And you can also search for, for example, case insensitive with I. But you can, of course, uh, look up the documentation for more uh, useful commands. So let's say we want to do the following. We are using grep to return this parameter, to return this line here. But let's say we want only to return the value. So let's say we want only to return four and do something with that four afterwards, for example. There is, of course, also a great documentation for AWAK, which is also a command used for manipulating strings, um, searching for certain patterns, uh, returning specific lines, columns, and so on and so forth. Basically, it is an extension to grab uh, for doing more complicated tasks more complicated search, like for example, finding the second occurrence of files and so on and so forth. So let us return to our example here where we are searching for param3. Now we can use the pipe operator to combine a new command. And in that new command, we will use awk minus f, which is going to be equal. Uh, and this equal here is going to be the um, division sign. And now we need to add an action that we are going to execute. And that action is going to be to print out the second value here. Oops. So if we now print this out, this should return only the four. So let us take a look at the syntax of AWK. So let us just write this down. So the syntax looks like the following. First, we define options. And those options can be, for example, case insensitive, the minus i that we have done. Then the selection criteria. In this case, the selection criteria was the equal sign and then the action. And in our action, we wanted to return the second value, which was four, and we specify the input file. In this case, we don't have an output file. We're just writing it to the console. And as already mentioned, to look into different commands, you can use the documentation there. For example, if you, if you have some complex regex expressions, some complicated patterns, you can look them up there, or it basically uh, boils down to using regex. This brings us to our next example, where we want to use regex in order to find if an email is valid or not. So let us go back here and create a new file, and I'm going to call this email.sh. 
and we're going to write this one into a file. Uh, we're not going to write this into the console. And also keep in mind that you can write all the files or all the commands that we have done so far uh, in a file and not execute them in the console. So first of all, let us specify our end, uh, interpreter, which is going to be pin bash. Now, uh, we want first to read an input. In order to do that, we're going to type in read minus p, and we're going to write enter email. After which, we will take a parameter called email. So now, we want to print two different outputs if our check passes or not. So let us specify an if, and let us specify a then, we will write something here, email k, okay. and we will have an else echo email not okay. You could write anything there. So now we have taken this as an input parameter, and in order to reference to that, we are going to mark it with a dollar sign email. So let us put this into quotation marks because we are going to compare strings here in the end. And now, in order to do a comparison operator, we can mark this the following. This is going to be a comparison operator uh, within bash. So now we need to write the correct regex expression uh, to check if this email fits it or not, which is pretty similar to writing this in any other language. So let us define our regular expression and explain on the way what it means. So first of all, we will use the dach command here, which is going to mean that this is the beginning of a string. So this is going to be the beginning of our string. And let us write an email here, an example, uh, to better understand what we are checking for. So this is the beginning of our string. And in the first part of the email, we can use alphabetic characters that can be capital. We can use uh, lowercase letters and we can use numbers from 0 to 9, for example. You could, of course, add something like dots, question marks, pluses, minuses. And for example, if you want also to have a plus sign, we could just add plus here. Now, the next part is going to be this add sign. And we definitely need an add and it can't be anything else. After that add sign, we are going again to have a row of the same characters basically. So we will again be able to have A till Z, um, capital or lowercase, 0 to 9. And then we will have our last part, which is going to be a dot. So again, we use a plus and we need to escape the dot. So because a dot has its own meaning. And in order to escape it, we use this backslash here. And now, again, we specify what characters can go in here. And for example, let's say we want only to have letters here and we don't want to have uh, numbers, for example. Let's save this. Let's go back to here and let's execute this. So this is going to be email.sh, enter our email, um, alex at gm.c. Um, we made an error here and I forgot basically to delete this here. So let us return back. And we also need to add a key here to close this. Um, so let us return back and type in alex g.c. And this email is going to be okay. And let's for example type alex g.f1 and and this is also okay we made an error here we need to signalize the end of this um, sequence and this is going to be signalized with the dollar sign so basically this marks the beginning and this marks the end so if you run this now again this should hopefully work um, one for example email is not okay and we can also for example limit the number of characters we can have here and uh, let's do that for example limit it to 
be only between two and five, for example. So if you run this again, this should not work for the same input. So F1 should, F E should, for example, also not be okay. But if you run this again, and we have a minimum of two characters here, this should be okay. Oh, uh, I'm again typing numbers. Sorry for that. So, for example, this is going to be okay. So I hope um, this video was useful to you. I tried to cover the most useful and most common commands using bash, which you will encounter anywhere from interview questions to basically any IT project you're involved with. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot and see you in the next one.